Oh, hi, this is my bike. Please don't use that intro. This bike is my Canyon Inflight AL SLX 9.0 cyclocross bike. And you might recognize it from a couple of videos that we filmed in Belgium when we went to film pro bikes at the Coxider World Cup, which was then canceled. I think that's a first, having a cyclocross World Cup canceled. So we went to the woods, not too far away, found some cool trails, showed you a few skills on this bike. Starting not at the top of this bike, but at the front, I've got SRAM Force Hydro R levers. I'm running a CX-1 setup, so I don't have any shift lever in my left hand. Handlebars are Canyon. They're 42 centimeters wide, and the stem is also Canyon, and that's 10 centimeters long. Bar tape, in fitting with the rest of the bike, is black, and I also think black bar tape is pretty much the only way to go for cyclocross, unless you're some sort of national or world champion, which I'm not, in which case you can go for white bar tape, and if you're a national world champion, you've probably got someone changing your white bar tape for you. Everyone else, stick with black bar tape. With the bars and stem covered, let's have a look at the frame and forks. First up, they are black, which I think is a very good color for a bike that you're gonna ride in winter and off-road. Hides the muck a little bit. And the frame is aluminum. That's not too unusual for cyclocross bikes. I actually remember when I raced, which was four or five years ago now, at least, maybe five years ago, I did race on aluminum bikes. So it's definitely a familiar ride feel and I think Aluminium on cyclocross bikes gives a really good, lively ride feel. The welds look super smooth. No complaints on appearance at all. I think this bike looks fantastic. Forks are carbon fiber. And in a first for me, this is my first cyclocross bike with disc brakes. I'm really impressed with the experience so far. I definitely think that better braking does actually help you to go faster, especially in quite a technical discipline like cyclocross. Another plus for cyclocross bikes is that it moves all the mechanisms away from the rim. So you don't have as many issues with kind of tire clearance, collecting mud, that sort of thing. I clearly remember a nightmare cyclocross race where we were having to change bikes every lap, twice a lap rather, and at one point it got so muddy that despite changing bikes twice a lap, I had to pull mud out of my wheels because it was that blocked up. And I don't think that would ever happen with disc brakes. Like the shifters, the brakes that I'm using on this bike are SRAM Force Hydro R. And Unusually for cyclocross bikes, or at least for pro-level cyclocross bikes, I am using 160 rotors front and rear. Now, you see many of the best cyclocross riders in the world using 140 rotors front and rear, and that's because the slightly smaller rotor gives a brake feel more like the cantilever brakes that many of them were using last year. But like I said, after just a few rides on disc brakes, I can't see myself ever going back to canties. A couple more details on the frame. It's got a press fit bottom bracket, it has two bottle cage mounts and for me that's a very good thing because it means that I can use this bike through the summer when I might need to carry water and it's got a few patches of helicopter tape just to protect the frame from cable rub and chain slap. Again a very good thing and definitely something I would recommend that you do to your own cross bike. The chain set is a SRAM Force and like I do on all of my other bikes I'm using 172.5 millimeter cranks. The chain ring that I've chosen, my single chain ring, is a 42 tooth. I think that's the ideal midpoint between a 40, which may be too small, especially if you're using it to commute or actually ride places rather than race, and a 44, which I think for most of us is just too big to ride on those climbs. From chain ring size, I feel that I should move back to the cassette, and that's because when I used this bike, I did a video called How to Ride Steep Climbs on a Cyclocross Bike, which for the record, I do still think is one of the more fun things that you can go out and do on a cross bike. And a few of you pointed out that I was kind of cheating because my cassette is a 10 through to 42. Now bear with me, well I'd never use that range of cassette in a race situation because it's too wide and actually if I'm riding 42, 42, I should probably be off my bike and walking. For a general riding thing, it's actually really, really good because what 42, 42 gives you is a one-to-one -one gear which is similar to a mountain bike gear in many ways. So it allows you to ride steeper off-road climbs that otherwise you might have to get off and run or maybe even walk on a cyclocross bike. So for general riding, I'd go for this gear, if not for racing. Before we get to the wheels, and wheels and tubular tires are always pretty much my absolute favorite part of any cyclocross bike. I actually get very excited about it. Let's finish with the seat post, which is Canyon Zone. It's a very cool design. I haven't seen it on other brands of bike, but I certainly like it in appearance and it works very well. And the saddle, I've gone for a Physique Arione. 
And I've gone for that because it's quite a long saddle, which gives quite a good landing platform, if you will, when you're hopping back on your cyclocross bike. Finally, pedals. I borrowed these from my flatmate, Scott Lockland, presents over at GMBN. They're Crank Brothers Candy 7s. I'd actually never used Crank Brothers pedals before. I'd always ridden Shimano pedals, and I'm really impressed with them. They've got a good platform, so if you can't quite clip in because your cleat's too clogged up, you can still pedal really well. And they're four-sided, and they're really, really good clearance. So four-sided means that you pretty much can always clip in, and the platform means that if you can't clip in, you've got something to push against. Now, one of my favorite parts of any cyclocross bike, like I said, it's the wheels and the tubular tires. I'm using Reynolds Assault disc wheels, and they are the tubular version. The uh, hubs have a six bolt pattern for the disc brakes. The benefit of having a disc specific wheel is that it misses out the braking surface, which means that the rim is slightly wider at the rim bed. So the tire, which in the case of these tires, they're slightly wider too. So they sit better on the rim, which means that they have slightly more grip out the trails. The tires that I'm using are Challenge Griffo 32 millimeter wide tubeless. So they're not the absolute maximum for cyclocross, which is 33, but 32 is a good width for any cyclocross tire. The Griffo tread is something that, if you're a fan of cyclocross, you're probably really familiar with. It's the kind of intermediate to dry condition tubular tread that most people use for most of the time. So if it gets really wet and muddy, you might have a tire like a Dugas Rhino. If it's really dry, you might have a file tread type tire. If it's anything else, you'll have something that looks very much like this. So they're great for all conditions. Well, that's it for the specifics of the build of the bike. Like I said, it is a bike that I've had great fun tearing around the woods on. Cyclocross bikes are just a ton of fun to ride. But before I go, I think I should weigh it, especially as the main video I did on this bike was about riding up steep hills. So the bike weighs in at just over eight kilograms, which is a really good weight for cyclocross when you consider the heavier tires and the slightly heavier build that just accommodates the rigors of off-road riding. I hope you've enjoyed a look at my Canyon bike. And if you like this bike and like cyclocross, give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see the videos that we made while I was riding this bike, they're going to be on screen in a second. But first, click on the GCN logo to subscribe to GCN if you haven't done so already. The videos are how to smash steep climbs on your cyclocross bike, and that one can be found right there, and the 10 essential cyclocross skills, and that can be found right down there. Cool, thumbs up.